Let's study 10th standard ICSE physics, chapter 4, refraction of light, section A, laws of refraction and the refractive index. Light is the fastest thing in the universe. Nothing can travel faster than 3 into 10 raised to 8 meters per second, which is the speed of light in vacuum. But the speed of light itself slows down in different media. For example, in water, it's just 2.25 into 10 raised to 8 meters per second, and in glass, it's 2 into 10 raised to 8 meters per second. Although this is also very high speed compared to our vehicles and rockets. But because of this change in speed of light in different transparent media, the phenomenon of refraction takes place. You see, when light travels from one transparent medium, let's say air, to another transparent medium, let's say glass, then it bends. We have seen this refraction of light in our daily life. For example, you can see here how the pencil appears to be bent on the surface of water. That is a boundary separating two media, air and water. This is because of refraction of light, which is because of the different speeds of light in air and water respectively. So whenever light travels from a rarer medium to a denser medium, it bends towards the normal. This is the incident ray. This is the point of incidence. This is the normal or the perpendicular at the point of incidence. It is perpendicular to the surface separating the two media. And the refracted ray is closer to the normal. That means the angle of refraction here is smaller than the angle of incidence. So there is a deviation called delta here, which means that initially the ray of light was supposed to travel like this, but now it has bent like this. So by how much has it bent? It has bent by this angle called the angle of deviation. On the other hand, if the ray of light is traveling from a denser medium to a rarer medium, it will refract away from the normal. That means the angle of refraction will be greater than the angle of incidence. This was the original direction, but now it has moved. So this is the angle of deviation delta. Now remember, even if it's a transparent surface, some percentage of light will get reflected always. Nothing is 100% transparent. But in this chapter, we are focusing only on the refraction and not on the reflection. Now, the reason why light bends can be understood with the help of an analogy. Imagine that a vehicle is moving from one surface to another. Let's say a grassy surface to a concrete road. And it's moving inclined to this boundary at an angle. The moment it tries to make a transition, from the grassy surface to the concrete road, you see the speed at which it travels will change because there is a difference in the friction on the road and on the grassy surface. But the speed changes at different instances for the tires. I see that the, the right tire of the vehicle makes the transition into the concrete road first and the left tire enters the concrete road just a split second later. That is enough for it to, let's say, lose balance and change its direction from the original one. So now you can imagine light to have changed its direction simply because its speed changed. And when I say denser to rarer or rarer to denser, we are not talking about the physical density, which is mass upon volume. We are talking about the optical density. Objects like glass have a higher optical density, which means the speed of light, light is less in these media. And air is called rarer because its optical density is less and the speed of light is greater in air, almost the same as that in vacuum. But what if light is traveling from one medium to another along the normal? First of all, what is the angle of incidence here? Well, it's zero degrees. See, angle of incidence is the angle between the incident ray and the normal, which is zero degrees in this case. This 90 degrees is not the angle of incidence, it's the angle between the incident ray and the boundary of separation. That's not called the angle of incidence. So whenever angle of incidence is zero degrees, angle of refraction is also zero degrees. That is, no refraction will take place, even though the light is traveling from a rarer medium to a denser medium. This is similar to if a, a vehicle is traveling in a direction perpendicular to the surface, then both the tires of the vehicle will reach the concrete road at the same time. So it won't change the direction, even though the speed has changed. Here the speed of light has changed, and yet there is no refraction. Another occasion when refraction doesn't take place, even when it is traveling inclined to the normal, is if both the media have the same optical density, that is the speed of light will be the same. If that happens, then refraction won't take place. For example, 
if you look at turpentine oil and glycerin they will have the same speed of light inside them so no refraction will take place if light is traveling from turpentine oil to glycerin now let's talk about the laws of refraction first law says that the incident ray the refracted ray and the normal at the point of incidence all lie in the same plane plane means a two dimensional surface that means the incident ray is this then the refracted ray cannot come out of the page it will stay in the same plane and the second law it's called the snell's second law it says that the ratio of the sine of angle of incidence to the sine of angle of refraction is always a constant and that constant is called the refractive index for the given pair of medium that is the refractive index of the second substance with respect to the first substance let's understand the meaning of refractive index take this example if you do an experiment to measure the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction and we collect all the data we will notice that for different angle of incidences we will have different angles of refraction let's say for 40 degrees the angle of refraction is 17 degrees then it becomes 22 degrees 24 24.5 degrees and so on i'm just using some random values at first sight it's clear that as the i is increasing r is also increasing but not in the same proportion so i cannot say that i is directly proportional to r or vice versa but on further inspection if i measure the value of sin i sin is a trigonometrical ratio just like square root of 40 has a given value similarly sin of 40 will also have a value using the trigonometry table which you will study in math so if i get the values of sin i and also of sin r let's say the values were i'm again i'm using some random values these are not the true values let's say this was 2 and this is 1.5 then this is 4 and this becomes 3 this is 6 and this is 4.5 and so on now i see a clear cut relationship because 2 upon 1.5 or 4 upon 3 or 6 upon 4.5 will have the same answer the ratio is constant and that ratio is called the refractive index so the refractive index is a very useful term because it helps us to understand how much is light refracting now vacuum and air have refractive index 1 that means the speed of light doesn't change much but diamond has a very high refractive index 2.41 it means that the refraction has happened a lot and the speed of light has decreased a lot that's the use of refractive index next let's talk about the effect of this refraction on the speed of light v frequency f and wavelength lambda now remember even if light travels from one medium to another the frequency will never change because frequency of light only depends on the source of light but the velocity will change and if the velocity changes the wavelength will also change so if light passes from a rarer to denser medium we know that the velocity will decrease imagine if you're going from a rarer road to a denser road your velocity will decrease because it will be too crowded to pass through similarly light's velocity will decrease from a rarer that is optically rarer object to an optically denser object so the wavelength will also decrease but the frequency remains the same now that we know the definition of refractive index and also its formula it's a good time to understand another way of looking at refractive index the other definition of refractive index for a given pair of media is speed of light in vacuum which is 3 into 10 raised to 8 upon speed of light in that medium let's take an example to answer this question what is the refractive index of glass with respect to air well that will be 3 into 10 raised to 8 that is the second medium velocity is written in the denominator and the first medium velocity is written in the numerator so we get the refractive index of glass with respect to air as 1.5 even if you don't write air it's okay it's understood its respect with respect to air or with respect to vacuum So the absolute refractive index of glass when i say absolute i mean with respect to vacuum the absolute refractive index of glass is 1.5 and these are the values of absolute refractive indices so it's obviously with respect to air now notice how the absolute refractive index is never less than 1 because if if it could be less than 1 it would mean that the denominator will be bigger than the numerator that's not possible because velocity of light is maximum in air or vacuum so the value of the fraction has to be greater than 1 when you talk about absolute refractive index so now we know two ways to calculate refractive index one is using this formula and the other is using this one but in numericals we shall be using mostly only this similarly refractive index of water is 
So clearly water's refractive index is less than glass because it is less dense than glass. So speed of light in water is more than that in glass. Refraction, that is bending of light will be more in glass with respect to water because its refractive index is more. More the refractive index, more is the refraction, that is the bending. Remember that. Refractive index of diamond is 2.41. What does it mean? It means that light travels 2.4 times faster in air than in diamond. Or the speed of light in diamond is 1 upon 2.41 times the speed of light in air. So light travels quite slowly in the diamond because diamond is optically denser than air. Now here we talked about absolute refractive index which is always with respect to air. But what if we want to calculate the refractive index with respect to something else? For example, what is the refractive index of glass with respect to water? Well, the formula is again the first medium in the numerator and the second medium's velocity, uh, the velocity in the second medium in the denominator. So we get the answer is 1.125. And another way to calculate this would be refractive index of glass with respect to water is nothing but the absolute refractive index of glass upon the absolute refractive index of water, which will give me the same answer, 1.125. So this was using the velocities, respective velocities, and this calculation was using the respective absolute refractive indices. On the other hand, if I were to find the refractive index of water with respect to glass, then the answer is 0 0.89. So in such cases, I can get the refractive index less than 1 because it's not with respect to air or vacuum. Now, I had said that when a ray of light passes from one medium to another, its frequency will remain the same, but the velocity and wavelength will change. So if I want to calculate the new wavelength, then this is the formula. New wavelength is equal to original wavelength upon refractive index. That's another use of refractive index. The derivation of this formula is not required to be studied, but such numericals can be asked. Now, what are the factors that affect the refractive index of a medium? When I say that, suppose this is glass and its refractive index is 1.5, what does this value depend on? Well, number one, it depends on the nature of the medium. Of course, if it's glass, it's 1.5. If it's water, it's 1.33. Even glass has various varieties. So different varieties of glass will have different refractive indices. Next, it depends on physical conditions such as temperature. If you heat glass or any other substance, then the refractive index will change because its density or even optical density will change. And finally, it depends on the wavelength or the color of light. Students, white light is actually comprising of electromagnetic rays of various wavelengths. From 4000 angstrom to 8000 angstrom. That's the range, which we'll study in chapter 6, the spectrum. But that means the Vibgyor colors have different wavelengths. White light is actually made up of seven colors. That's how we perceive it. Color is subjective. But different colors, or rather, let me say, different wavelengths of light will have different refractive indices for that substance. What this means is, if you pass white light through a prism, from air to glass, from a rarer medium to denser medium, all of them will refract towards the normal. Here's a normal. But different colors bend differently. Because as long as they were in air, the speed of all the colors was same. But the moment they enter any other medium, the speeds are different. Red light speed is still the highest among the seven. And violet light speed changes the most. It becomes the least out of the seven colors. And again, you can see from glass to air, they're once again bending away from the normal this time because now they're moving from denser to rarer. And that's how white color, white light splits into the rainbow colors. This is called dispersion of light by a prism, which we'll study in the sixth chapter. But now you know why wavelength or the color also matters when you talk about refractive index. So when I say the refractive index of uh, glass is 1.5, that's just, uh, just approximate. For red, it is different. And for violet, it is different. For red, let's say it's uh, 1.4 and for violet, it's 1.6. So more the refractive index, more it bends. So clearly violet bends the most. Next, principle of reversibility of light. Now, if I were to interchange the incident ray and the refracted ray, the diagram would still remain like this. That means if a ray of light were to pass from medium 2 to medium 1, then it will retrace its original path, which means that the refractive index of the second medium with respect to the first medium is a reciprocal of the refractive index of the first medium with respect to the second medium. This is something we observe here as well. The refractive index of glass with respect to water was 9 upon 8. And the refractive index of water with respect to glass is 8 upon 9. That's because of the principle of reversibility of light. It's useful in numericals.
Now let's study the refraction through a rectangular glass block in detail. So here refraction is happening twice, once at point O and the other at point B. At point O, the refracted ray is moving towards the normal, but after point B, it is moving away from the normal because here it is moving from glass to air, denser to rarer. Interestingly, since the two refracting surfaces PQ and SR were parallel to each other, incident ray is also parallel to this emergent ray. The second refracted ray is the emergent ray, so they are parallel. So there is no deviation. If it was moving in the south east direction, it continues to move in the southeast direction. There is just one shift out here, which is called a lateral displacement. Also, geometrically, you can prove that the angle of incidence here will be equal to the angle of incidence. This is called the angle of emergence, rather. The angle of emergence is equal to angle of incidence here. Now, this is true only for a glass block because they are parallel sides. In case of prism, if you remember, the refracting surfaces were not parallel to each other. Hence, there was deviation. Also, notice how the white light was not split into seven colors because dispersion hardly took place. Microscopically, if you view, the seven colors could be seen, but they are parallel to each other and they are so close to each other, they are not going apart from each other like it happened in the prism's case. So the, our eyes are not able to differentiate between the seven colors and we see this as white light. So these are the points of difference between refraction through a glass slab and a refraction through a prism. Finally, let's study about multiple reflections in a thick mirror. Sometimes when you look into a thick mirror, you see multiple reflections of yourself. You see an image which is clear and bright and sharp, but you also see some faint images in the mirror. Let's understand this phenomenon. But before that, let's talk about the factors which affect this lateral displacement. It can be a slight lateral displacement or a large lateral displacement. That depends on a few things like it depends on the thickness of the medium. Thicker the medium, this, if the glass slab was very thick, the lateral displacement would be more. It depends on the angle of incidence, more the angle of incidence, more is lateral displacement. And it depends on the refractive index also. So if this block was made up of diamond, then the lateral displacement would be greater. And of course, the lateral displacement for violet will be greater than that of red. The red color is displaced very less and violet will be displaced more. However, since the glass slab is thin enough, we can't really see the red and the violet lights separately. Hence, we see only white light. Now coming back to reflection and refraction in a thick mirror. You need to practice this diagram, it's double ticked. Even this is double ticked. Now first of all, when a ray of light falls on the mirror from the object, reflection takes place. But that is like, let's say, it's 4% reflection, which is not much. But since the mirror is made up of glass, it's transparent, so most of the light enters inside. But notice here there's a refraction is bending towards the normal. When it hits the silvered surface, here reflection will take place. And you know, when reflection takes place, the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. Now, it is trying to move from glass to air. So it will be bending away from the normal. And notice how this ray is parallel to the initial ray. So 4% was already reflected. And imagine this is 96%. Out of that, let's say again, 4% is reflected back into the medium. Because whenever light is moving from one transparent medium to another, some light is always reflected. So let's call this as 4% reflected back. So how much is left? 92%. These are not accurate values. For simplicity's sake, I'm using these values because I want to drive home one point, which I will tell you shortly. Now out of this 4%, again, it's entirely reflected. Actually, some is absorbed, but it's reflected here. And out of that, again, some of it will be reflected and some will be refracted out. Let's call this as 3%. And the procedure goes on. And the percentage of light coming out decreases drastically. So maximum light, which came out was 92% approximately. And when our eyes perceive this, they appear to be coming from here. So the second image is always the brightest image. That's the point I wanted to stress on. That's the only thing you have to remember here, apart from the diagram. The explanation and all is not so important, but just remember in a thick mirror, the second image is the brightest image. And I just showed you how it is the brightest because maximum light comes out through that. Hi students, this is AJ sir. If you like this video, press the like button. If you would like to enroll for my online test series or online lectures, email me or message me on Instagram. Check the description for more information.